Breaking news, breaking stories, tracking stories. This is the News Channel 25 Night Beat. Schools across the state got their accountability ratings based on tax test results today. New, easier guidelines, including being able to project student grades, meant more schools got exemplary and recognized ratings. Well, once again, though, Waco ISD and Waco High are academically unacceptable, but the district says the TEA made mistakes. News Channel 25's John Coco is live in the Waco newsroom with why the district contends this ruling is unfair. Bruce Waco ISD says they're going to appeal those ratings. Both the district and the high school were found unacceptable for two different reasons. But the high school, their rating was partly ruined because of students behind bars. It's been a tough school year for Waco ISD. In 2010, maybe no different. The high school's initial rating was ruled academically unacceptable because of completion rate. But the district officials say the TEA has it all wrong. It basically boils down to those ratings are clerical errors. The school identified nine students that it believes should not have been counted as non-completers, six of who were students currently incarcerated. They couldn't actually attend normal student activities like going to class or taking tests. Well, it's, it's always upsetting when students are in jail, period. And then it, that, that just has a domino effect. And one of the implications of that happens to be ratings. But there are many other implications of that as well. The students aren't being educated. But the district says these students shouldn't bring down the entire high school which they added made drastic improvements this past school year. They've made tremendous gains with um, academics as well. And that they've worked um, diligently over the past, especially the past two years, with, for those academic gains. I'm told a letter of appeal and supporting documentation has already been prepared and will hopefully be mailed to the Commissioner of Education. Waco ISD officials are confident the appeal will be granted. Now, Waco ISD was ruled unacceptable because of a dropout rate for 7th and 8th graders in the white subgroup. The district will also appeal this ruling saying the seven students qualified as dropouts should not apply because of other clerical errors. Live in the Waco newsroom, John Coco, News Channel 25. All right, thank you, John. Well, now the number of school districts rated as exemplary, the state's top category, more than doubled from last year. The number of schools receiving the state's lowest rating, academically unacceptable, dropped to 30 districts from 87. Locally, 15 school districts were exemplary. Only two, Waco ISD, as John told us, and Lampasas, were rated unacceptable. And as John mentioned, Waco plans on appealing that grade. The district increased its number of exemplary campuses and went from five unacceptable campuses last year to two this year, Waco High and Doris Miller Elementary. Now, Temple ISD improved to acceptable this year, and Colleen ISD was recognized with 12 exemplary campuses. Other districts that improved over last year were La Vega, Rosebud Lot, and Star. To see how your school did, we posted a link to the TEA's complete list of grades on our website, kxxv.com. And now, the First Alert 25 First Forecast. There were showers and thunderstorms in Texas today, just not in central Texas. They were all out to the west near Midland, Odessa, back to El Paso. That's because we have a big area of high pressure that's blocking anything from getting here. And that big blue H is going to stay around for a while. Weekend forecast, notice the thermometer going up and up and up. That's what's going to be happening this weekend. 100 degrees on Saturday, 102 on Sunday with south and southwest winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. So make sure the AC is running pretty hot or cool this time of year. And we'll also see your forecast, which includes more triple digits. How long will it last? We'll tell you coming up. All right, thanks, Matt. New on the night beat, a Continental Express jet had to take evasive action to avoid colliding with an experimental aircraft at George Bush Intercontinental Airport in Houston today. The FAA says the jet had to climb 300 feet to pass over that small plane. At one point, they were only 100 feet apart. The pilot of that smaller aircraft says his navigational equipment was not working properly. A Waco area man is sentenced to more than 100 years in prison for raping a four-year-old girl. Now, the jury sentenced Carl Mayer of Bellmead to a total of 107 years in prison for the 2008 crime. And as he left the courtroom in handcuffs today, the former ice cream truck driver continued to proclaim his innocence. He got two 50-year sentences and one seven-year sentence stacked by a judge. Mayor, now 28, must serve at least half of that sentence before he's eligible for parole. When asked by reporters if he did sexually assault the little girl, this is what Meyer had to say. Carl, did you rape that little girl? Yeah, no. No, I'm going on appeal. 
The jury took only 15 minutes yesterday to convict Mayer. Topping the crime beat tonight, police arrested a Waco man today after a fatal hit and run accident early Sunday morning. 43 year old Donald Derek Dulock is now charged with manslaughter and failure to stop and render aid. He's believed to be the driver of that dually style pickup that failed to yield right away at West Lake Shore Drive in Hillcrest. Jimmy Walton Summers Jr. was on a motorcycle that crashed into the back portion of that pickup. Officers say Dulock turned in front of the 49 year old Summers. Media descriptions of the truck led to tips that helped police find the vehicle. A Belton man's been arrested and charged with a murder in Houston after a woman was run over four times. Florentino Ortega Suchel is accused of knocking Lucy Sanchez Garcia down in an apartment parking lot in Houston in March of last year. Investigators say he then drove a truck back and forth over her body four times. Suchel reportedly said, so what, when a witness confronted him at the scene about what he did. He's now in the Bell County jail on an immigration hold in addition to that murder charge. Authorities have identified a man and a woman who were arrested following that chase and manhunt we told you about yesterday. It started in Hill County and ended in Limestone County. That's where 30-year-old Christina Turner and 31-year-old David Turner tried to pass a fake $50 bill at Dixie's restaurant in Mount Calm. The couple, who's from the Temple area town of Holland, then fled the scene after the owner recognized that it was in fact a fake bill. Police on horseback, police dogs, even a helicopter tracked them down in a matter of hours in Coolidge, 35 miles northeast of Waco, where they ditched their vehicle. Authorities found trash bags, a printer, and fake bills inside that SUV. David Turner has a parole violation in Austin for aggravated assault on a public servant. Christina Turner has been charged with forgery. They are both in the Hill County Jail. A man convicted of the murder of Oakwood rancher Dennis Courtney has another prison sentence now rather to serve. Oscar Doster pled guilty on Tuesday to the murder. Today he was given a life sentence. Doster was already serving time in an Alabama jail when he and two other inmates escaped in March of 2005. Courtney's body was found a month later in Oakwood, about 90 miles east of Waco, bound with duct tape and shot two times. Doster will begin serving this sentence after satisfying his time in Alabama. An elderly woman in Hubbard, about 30 miles northeast of Waco, died in a house fire this morning. It happened about 7.15 in the 800 block of East Magnolia Avenue. Authorities say a truck driver stopped by the city hall to report the fire. A woman in her late 80s, identified as Ina Wallace, Willis, I should say, was found dead in her bed. The state fire marshal in Austin is investigating. A controversy over old pumps could end up costing some folks on Lake Belton thousands of dollars. The Army Corps of Engineers is telling homeowners they can no longer use certain underwater pumps locals say they've been utilizing for years. News Channel 25's Mark Wiggins took a trip to the lake this afternoon where some residents told him it was the Corps that gave them permission to use those pumps in the first place. Bruce, and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers owns dozens of lakes across Texas, and Lake Belton is just one of them. But a recent Corps memo has some residents living along Belton's shores outraged. $10,000 is a lot of money uh, to put into a system like this, and then all of a sudden just get a letter that says you need to pull it out. $10,000. It's a heavy price tag, but one that two years ago, homeowner Guy Fowler thought would be a good investment. Like hundreds of others on Lake Belton, Fowler has a submerged underwater pump used to draw water out of the lake and up to his yard for cleaning and irrigation. Now, the actual pumps are hard to see because they sit underwater. But on land, you can see the line right here. This leads all the way down to the lake where the actual pump rests about 25 feet below the lake's surface. Fowler says some of the pumps have been there for decades, and all of them were installed with permits approved by the Army Corps of Engineers. But the Corps claims that homeowners haven't been following the rules. What we found out was during routine inspections that there were pumps going up that were not uh, UL compliant. And so now we're, we're letting everyone know that, yes, this is our policy. Uh, we, we've changed it in place, so submersible pumps, they're not safe. Uh, therefore, they, they must be rendered uh, inoperable. The Corps of Engineers says the pumps are a potential electrocution hazard. In fact, there is a case of a 46-year-old man who died after contacting an underwater pump while swimming. But that was in 1993 in Oklahoma. And Fowler says forcing hundreds of homeowners to simply throw away expensive investments is just too much to ask. We know these work. We know they've been safe over the years. There have been no incidents. And fixing a problem that doesn't need fixing, it just doesn't make good common sense.
Now, the conflict has even drawn in a few local lawmakers, including U.S. Congressman John Carter, who's already called on the court to rescind the order to remove those pumps. Mark Wiggins for News Channel 25. All right, thank you, Mark. Coming up, First Alert 25 Chief Meteorologist Matt Hines tells us how hot it will get this weekend. Plus, a school bus catches fire, and it's all caught on tape. We'll have that story next.